So you can't pass, right? Correct. All right, so now I created this bare basic storage account good enough, but let's try to, let's say, make our script more reusable, make our script more usable out here, like we did with resource group yesterday. So what we did with resource group yesterday is that I gave you the option to go ahead and pass your own name and that went ahead and said whether the name exists or not and then went and created something out there. In the same way, I now want to, let's say, make this script absolutely reusable out here. And to make a script reusable, the first thing that I need to do is I cannot hard code this. This is called hard coding, wherein you're directly writing a name, telling that test zero, zero one and all these things out. And I'm not, I'm leaving no room for you as a user to change all these things out there. So in order for me to, let's say, allow you to, let's say, pass something, I will parameterize this. Can I say instead of test zero one, can I say RG name? I do this yes no maybe yes exactly you should provide rg names before itself which i will come back and address retrospectively and i will say this is instead of name giving the actual name here can i say it is storage name i can do a storage account name i can also say what is the replication and say SKU dollar SKU out here and access tier I let's say I want to put it in hot and account kind I also always want to let's say put it in let's say storage v2 I'm good with this and before passing this this is what I let's say was talking about before creating this particular command or before creating all these things out I will say param because I'm not using any more read hosts out here and whatever parameters that I pass here rg name storage name and etc i'll declare this out here inside the parameter block storage name yes and dollar sku which is the replication and the location also is something that i can allow a user to go ahead and pass it out i can also say dollar location and I have to change this from a hard coded value to a parameter value. Dollar location. This is what I can do. And after this, what I want to do is that again, I am letting a user pass a resource group name. Like you as a user, if I give you this script, you can go ahead pass any resource group name of, of your, let's say of your wish. But I don't know whether the resource group actually exists or not. If it doesn't exist, then your script will fail. Meaning what will happen is this. Let's save the script. And uh, yeah, let's save it in, let's say this particular introduction classes. Let's say storage account. Dot uh, PS1. And let's grab that particular URL. I mean, let's grab that link where I save this out. ATM classes. I'll change my path here. let me open up a new command no new window out here and if i want to call the script like i did yesterday i'll do a dot backslash i look into the folder and today i look into something called storage account and now you as a user if you call the script even you can let's say rg name storage name and all these things so let's go ahead give an rg name called demo 100 something like this a resource group name and i'm giving a resource group name that doesn't exist So the demo 100 resource group doesn't exist out here, but I give you the flexibility to go ahead and pass a resource group name and then storage account name. I'll say something like uh, dev storage 00 PS USC 3, something like this, some random name that I'm giving out here. The SKU and I can pass an SKU called standard LRS. And I'll say location, I'll say it is West US any location is such out here and what this script has is this one it has firstly a lot of comments and it has a parameter block which is taking all the input parameters from the runtime so you as a user when you're calling this script you're passing all these parameters 
and it only has one command let me remove all these things out here so how to go ahead and create a storage account it's just telling new hyphen az storage account it's using all the parameter names that you passed so let's call this out and let's see what it does here Uh, what is it telling you right now? That is not there. Not found. Not found, which I know. You will not find that which I know because that resource group doesn't exist. Now, my script should not only create a storage account for you, it should also check whether that particular resource group exists or not. If it doesn't, since I've parameterized all these things, I should let you create it exactly that is what i need to do so again yesterday's logic whatever that we used for parameters and etc i'll do the same thing today i'll say dollar status is equal to get hyphen what should i get here name az resource group name. resource group resource group exactly resource group the name what is the name here dollar rg name yes location let's say dollar location out here error action silently continue and i now say if dollar status is equal to what dollar null exactly i'll say now instead of doing a write host, what I'll do is I'll do a write warning. Giving you a warning telling that the resource group is not there. I'll go ahead and create this out. So the color will change. So it's a better way to identify that it's a warning and all these things. So same thing. Write host, write warning, same thing, but it'll just give you a orange color, let's say line telling that you know what it is not there and etc. So I'll say RG with the name. Hola rg name does not exist creating a new one and i can say new hyphen az resource group hyphen the name of the resource group is dollar rg name hyphen the location is dollar location and any more commands nothing that's it these are the two commands else and when it can be else if the if condition is not satisfied and when can be the if condition not as satisfied if the resource group is there if it is not null exactly when can it be not null if this command returns you a resource group so else i'll say write host resource group already exists in the creation And if you want additional logging, you can also say proceeding towards or proceeding with storage account creation because the next thing that I'll do is create a storage account inside that particular resource group, right? So I'll say proceeding with storage account creation. This is something that I can go ahead and give out here for the user. And then it goes ahead and creates what? Our storage account out here. This is what I do in an end-to-end -end procedure. So again, this is the same logic what I wrote yesterday. Same logic what I'm writing today with one additional thing out here called new hyphen az storage account out here. So let's do that. So let's try this out once again. Do you see now it's coming as what? Warning telling RG name something does not exist creating one. And after that, it's now starting to create a uh, storage account in there again before if you want to understand again if you don't now the script is let's say gets it's let's say stuck here you don't know what exactly it's doing a better way to handle this is that before it creates a storage account you can do a write host and say creating or attempting to create a storage account with the name dollar storage name r a g e that i missed okay 
something like dollar storage name this will tell you that okay fine your script is at this line and the next thing it's going ahead and creating something known as a storage account out here and do you see what it happened it went ahead created something called as a storage account inside something known as a demo 1000 or demo 100 resource group out here so if you go into the portal earlier i did not have a demo 100 now i have a demo 100 resource group inside which i now have a storage account that got created out here so i have a storage account that got created using this particular script which is checking whether this resource group exists or not if it is not it's going ahead and creating one if it is it'll just say okay fine else loop and it's it's not doing anything out here so if i re-executed once again earlier what i have what i had is that i got an error telling that the resource group is not there and all that stuff if i re-executed once again it's telling RG exists attempting to create, but here it is failing. Telling what? The storage name is already taken. Why is it so, guys? Storage name should be unique. Then what should I do in my script to, let's say, make sure it doesn't fail and it treats it like how am I, let's say, doing the resource group? Because I'm checking the resource group is existing or not. If it is existing, I'm simply telling you what it exists. I'm skipping creation. I'm not even invoking that particular command. So I my script is, let's say, reusable, yes. But it is not fully automatic. It's not fully, let's say, reusable out here. For which what I'll do is I will again now give a value here called storage status. Earlier I checked for what? Resource groups status now i'll see a storage status out here now i'll say get hyphen az storage account not resource group storage account because now i'm checking whether the storage account is there or not I'll say hyphen what resource group name and what should be the resource group name here demo rg or should i give it as dollar rg dollar um, rg name yeah. i'll say dollar rg name I'll say hyphen name of the storage which is what storage name out here hyphen error action again because if the storage account does not exist this command has a potential to fail i'll say silently continue whatever i did for a resource group i'm implementing the same thing for storage account as well now i'll say if loop i'll say if the storage status instead of doing let's say the rg status now telling storage status is equal to null then i'll open up the bracket here i'll get all these commands inside it else i would say it host storage account with the name dollar storage name already exists skipping creation whatever i did for a resource group i'm implementing the same logic for the storage account as well i'm not doing anything different the only thing that I did is that instead of get hyphen AZ storage account, sorry, AZ resource group, I'm now doing an AZ storage account out here. And then I'm doing an if else statement with the same thing out there. That's it. That's the only thing that I changed. Now, if you run the same script, now it's a little smart in nature to understand that, okay, fine, it's there. If as I, as a user, I go ahead and I say, you know what, the storage account is not three, but four. I want a new one. If I execute this out right now, attempting to create the storage with the same name called something like four. And now in a minute, it will go ahead and create something called as a storage account with that particular name. Now my script is reusable, meaning if you pass an already existing name, it'll just tell you that the name exists and it'll skip it out. If it's not there, it will go ahead and create something out there for you. 
so in a minute it will go ahead and create this out and this is what end to end that i'm trying to do firstly we started off with just simple line called new hyphen az storage account and this is what i was telling is that this is an azure powershell command and i'm now combining it with my logic or i'm now combining it with the knowledge that i have on windows powershell which is using my parameters doing an if else checking whether the resource group is there then let's say getting whether that particular storage account actually exists or not and then going ahead and creating if not else i'm just telling that okay fine that particular storage account already exists out there so whatever logic that i followed for resource group i'm following the same thing for storage account as well the command is slightly changing that's the only thing that i did in this particular script out here yes any questions that i can take to you anyone any questions that i can take till you again if you look at the output it should have created a storage account by now it did create a storage account by now with this particular name and if i go here and look into the resource groups i have a storage account with that particular name as such again if you just run this command once again or if you just run the script once again it should simply tell you that the storage account already exists simply think that the storage account already exists out here for uh, this one uh, like for the script or so what i did normally is that i have all my scripts saved in a particular repository i can share that particular thing out there with you you can have a look at that so i normally share all my scripts out there so whatever that i write i will just give this link and like explain what this link is and all that stuff all these are the scripts on how to create a container basics of storage account parameterization so everything that we do parameterization everything that we do i have let's say i'm having all these scripts out here so i can give this entire folder link to let's say i can paste this folder link out here to, in this particular class out here and i request someone online to go ahead and paste this in the whatsapp group so that people offline can also use this out so all these are now the scripts uh, again i'll let you know when to look at one script after it's completed and etc so that you can look at let's say a particular script as such on how do you create it on these things for example uh, i said this is a container creation meaning a storage account container creation and if you look at the storage account creation same thing that i did so a couple of things that i you know kind of save this out so you can look at this or uh, you can just look at the documentation of it you will get the entire thing out here again if you look say uh, powershell create storage account if else if not exists you can get the entire script even online as well so it just depends upon again if you look at this one it just tells you how to write the command how to write the script and all these things out again the reason i don't give this material usually is because i want you all to let's say think about how you design your logic because this is logic and what i want you all to do is develop that logic uh, because even if you try to let's say remember this you'll remember it for a day or two but after that you'll definitely forget it because i don't want you all to remember this out just understand the logic behind it that should be sufficient yes anyone any questions till here the high current i am able to understand the logic but while creating the new logic i am i am not able to uh, recreate in my Correct. mind which uh, which will be an issue initially because uh, you are new to this language again same thing just like english language when we started learning english we did not write start start writing sentences right we started writing alphabets and then we started writing constructing sentences then put it in our daily use so it's a language that you are you know kind of starting with so on a daily basis please take at least like about half an hour or one hour try to see how people are creating it online how to let's say implement this particular logic if i did an if else can you do a for each can you do a for can you do let's say all these things out here that is what i want you all to think that's the direction in which i want you all to think out there so it's just developing a logic that's it and it'll take some time i agree it'll take some time it will take good amount of time out here again powershell is very vast any programming language or any scripting language that you take it's really vast out here it will take some time 
but all we need to understand is that are we in a position that if someone tomorrow comes and asks you that you know what what is the command to create can you create it i am not expecting you all to let's say give the entire solution at least the bare basic logic i'm good with that on top of which you can develop a lot of things out there okay. yes uh anyone any more questions here anyone any anything that i can take yes do you have a question okay good please uh, sku how to use i'm sorry sku how to use uh how to use okay when you say how to use what exactly are you talking about you know under storage uh, name on uh, sku and uh, in the uh, s location dollar location yeah so i use it here in this command i instead of let's say giving the actual sku i give a dollar sku out here so i just use it in this particular command out here does it answer your question any more questions guys anyone any more questions for this hi kiran uh, actually uh, we are, when we create a storage account there are uh, plenty of parameters uh, those are optional uh, but in, mm -hmm. in, which, in which scenarios we are going to create those parameters again in which scenario uh, depends upon uh, what you what we are really trying to do out there i mean there's something called assigned identity there's something called key vault identity key name and all that stuff which in all likely we will not even use again if you look at the examples out here uh, the example should tell you how to use this out so it's saying create a storage account create a storage account with let's say hot tier then you go ahead and let's say create something called hot then there's something called uh, generate and assign identity for a key vault and all that stuff so in the later sessions when we talk about identities when you talk about key vault and all those things out here uh, we will talk about all these additional parameters Thank you. Hi Kiran. Uh, in Azure portal, we have JSON view, right? Uh, is it possible mm -hmm. to do changes in the JSON view, or it uh, is just when you when you say JSON view, it's it's just a view. It's just a read only. Okay. You cannot change I this JSON. I tried to change uh, access tier from this uh, from this I mean from this JSON, uh, but it, I, there is no option to save. So I, I just yeah, okay. it's it's just a read only. the json okay. here is a read only i'll also talk about how can you change the properties in a json and all these things out there before that we'll first need to talk about what is json and then we need to talk about uh you know how do you let's say use json files and all these things out there yes any questions anyone anyone sorry uh here you cannot edit it there is something called json again i am not getting into it because a lot of people don't know what json really is so i would like to let's say start with the basics of json and then we'll go ahead and let's say understand what json really is and all these things on there but uh, before we close for the day what i want you all to try doing over a weekend is this guys this is a script which goes ahead checks if the resource group is existing or not then creates it checks whether the storage account is existing or not if not then goes and goes ahead and creates this out what i want you all to additionally do is can you write an additional logic here which checks if a container exists or not and then creates it uh, i mean what is the uh, what is the um, i mean the parameter for checking the container iphone something here. i i don't know you'll have to okay. tell me okay. you'll have to tell me what is the parameter to, for checking the container that's the assignment that how do you check whether the container is there how do you create a container if it throws an error please google that error firstly see what what exactly is google telling you how people are let's say doing it online and then try to implement that particular logic here I'll initially cover this out, but before I cover, it's good to have your own knowledge, or it's good to have your own logic in place, so that uh, you don't get confused with what I teach out here. 
Right, any more questions guys that I can take before I close? Yes, sorry. Uh, you have to create a container, but it should be reusable. Meaning if you give me the script, if I pass a new name of a container, that script should go ahead, create that particular container as well. So yes, you have to create a container just like I created a storage account, if else. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to check for that container if it's there. If it's there, you just have to tell me that it's there. If it is not, you have to go ahead and create it out there. Yes, yes. In real time scenarios, in everyone using uh, reusable scripts, right? I'm sorry, can you come again, please? In real time scenarios, in everyone using uh, reusable scripts or uh, they're creating something like? Uh, no, they will use As reusable scripts. As you said before, uh, para, uh, parameterization, uh, the concept. Correct, correct. Uh, can use it in real time scenarios also, right? Yes, uh, I mean, we use it in real time scenarios only. Uh, we do not use just the command. Uh, we use the complete script. We use the complete logic in a real time scenario as such. Uh, then the other thing is that, okay, what is the meaning of container? Please define uh, to understand what is the meaning of a container. You'll first have to visit my storage account class earlier because I covered what is a container there. So I cannot define it right now. So you will have to tell me what a container really is inside a storage account. Did we cover containers? Did we upload something called blob inside a container? Exactly. Yes. So Venkat, you have to tell me what exactly is a container. Not the other way around. Just go, please. Mm -hmm. I can run. Uh, when you say when you upload oh, just a second, sorry, I'll just come back to someone online which, who's asking a question. Uh, so yes, whenever you upload a blob inside a container, uh, you're not able to see that. Uh, when you say you're not able to see that, what exactly is happening for you? The resource not found in etc. You have to generate the SAS token, right? Shared access signature or access keys. Yes, you have to generate the shared access signature out there. Is someone online had a question? Hi, Kiran. Mm -hmm. Good, please. Yeah, if you want to create a 10 story accounts in 10 different resource group at a time. Okay. So what should we do? Uh, again, if you want to create 10 different resource groups in 10 different locations, or earlier I had something called two, uh, let's say arrays. I had Kiran, I had location and all that stuff. I did a for loop out there, right? same way you can have two different areas one for let's say the resource groups the other for storage accounts you can run a for loop on top of it telling for storage and all these things i'll show that to you again uh, shouldn't be an issue but yeah. please try it out using Thank a for loop earlier we had a logic called kiran belongs to something something like that try to use the same for loop for storage accounts see if you can even yeah, okay. if you are able to do that Again, is there a class uh, tomorrow? No, there is no class tomorrow. Uh, Saturday and Sunday is usually a holiday out here. Uh, we'll meet on Monday again. All right, thank you guys and have a good day ahead. Thank you.